Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and this is UDM Pro Complete Setup Part 8, where we are finally going to be diving into Unify Protect. Now, Unify Protect is a video surveillance system. It's where you can connect cameras, and those cameras record over your IP network. You can view and control all of your Unify Protect cameras by logging into the UDM Pro through your desktop browser. You can also do it with the Unify Protect app on a smartphone. They have applications for both Apple and Android. So let's dive in and take a look at Unify Protect. Here I am at the portal dashboard, the Unify OS dashboard. Mostly we've been working with Unify Network so far. This time we're going to go into Protect. The version of Protect that I'm running as of the recording of this video is version 1.19.0. Go ahead and click on Protect. And here we are brought to the Protect dashboard. In the upper left hand corner, we have our various menu items. We also have the version of our UDM Pro version 1.10.0. We can see storage utilization right now. There's really nothing to see because I don't have any cameras actually hooked up. I would like to start getting cameras hooked up, but before we dig into cameras, let's take a look at our general settings. So we're gonna click the settings gear icon down here on the left. And then under general, we can update protect. It'll show you if there's an update, but you actually need to go over to settings in Unify OS to actually run any updates that are available for protect. Here you can change your temperature units. Since I'm in the US, I'm gonna switch this to Fahrenheit. And then you've got time representation, 12 hours or 24 hours. We also have the option of enabling smart detections. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on it says Unify Protect, new smart detection feature. We are proud to introduce our latest Unify Protect feature, smart detection. Essentially what this does is it allows G4 cameras. So this only works on generation four cameras and newer. It allows those cameras to automatically detect people as well as vehicles uh, as part of the Unify Protect interface. You will actually see separate little video clips of smart detected people and vehicles. So we're gonna say, I agree. And now smart detections has been enabled. If we click on video retention, we have the option of setting time-based recording deletion. So if we turn this on, we can say, all right, I wanna delete anything older than say 60 days. All right, there might be requirements in your area to only retain surveillance video footage for a certain amount of time. Otherwise, if you turn this off, essentially all that means is record until the hard drive's full, and then once the hard drive's full, start deleting the oldest recordings on the hard drive. Next we have backups, and I would just leave this default, keep your daily backups on, but of course remember to download your backup file every so often by clicking download. Finally, under advanced, you can basically leave all of this default as well. Your device password is the actual password to get into the, lo the camera's local GUI interface. So the GUI interface that lives on most of these Unify Protect cameras. And then down here, we see linked bridge devices. Now this is an interesting setting that isn't going to be used yet, right? So this basically says linked bridge devices are access points, such as the one that I have hooked up, the U6 Lite. Uh, that can discover and pair protect Bluetooth devices such as the UP Sense. It's interesting that they put this kind of stuff in the settings interface here when the UP Sense is not even out yet. <laughs> okay, so it's not a device that is available for the general public. I believe it's in the early access store. Uh, so early access stuff, I can't really talk about too much. But this is a setting that once these extra protect devices come out, such as the UP Sense, uh, basically they will be automatically discovered by enabled access points such as the U6 LR and the U6 Lite. And then finally, related to this setting, we can auto adopt these Bluetooth devices if the U6 Lite or U6 LR access point detects them as having been connected or powered on. So it's all Bluetooth, right? So basically you plug in a UP sense, the access point detects that a Bluetooth device, a compatible Bluetooth device, device has been plugged in and it automatically adopts it into Unify Protect. At least that's how I believe it works. Again, these are early access things that I have not played with myself yet. Uh, I'm just going based off of what it says here in the description. 
Okay, so going back to the dashboard. Now our dashboard is not too exciting yet because we don't have any events, we don't have any cameras installed, nothing's happening yet. So the next thing that we wanna do is get some cameras adopted into Unify Protect. But before we adopt cameras, a quick word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by the good folks over at NextGenT. If you're looking to enhance your skills or start a career as a network engineer or cybersecurity specialist, look no further than NextGenT. NextGenT is an online IT school offering real world training on the latest technologies that's designed to launch your IT career in months rather than years. NextGenT also offers an ISA or income sharing agreement, meaning that you don't have to pay upfront for their training program. You pay back tuition for the school only when you're making over $40,000 per year in your new IT career. And NextGenT's career services team will mentor and work with you to help you land your dream job. Demand for network engineers and especially cybersecurity specialists is at an all time high, so there's no better time to get started with your IT career. I for one would have loved a program like this when I was just starting out, so make sure you click the link in the description of this video for more information about NextGenT's next level IT training programs. All right, now back to the video. All right, thank you so much for that. It is now time to adopt some cameras. Typically, when you're ready to adopt some cameras, you're gonna get a notification that pops up right here in the upper right-hand side that says, hey, new camera detected. Do you want to adopt this camera now? Now, I've got four cameras that are plugged in at a factory default state and that notification isn't showing up because they've already been plugged in for a while. So if you don't get that notification, you can basically manually adopt your cameras by going over here to Unified Devices and then we click on Add Devices. Now when we click Add Devices, it's gonna show you all of the detected cameras that are currently plugged into the network and sitting at a factory default state. So here we can see I have a G3 Flex, a G4 Bullet, a G4 Dome, and a G4 Pro all sitting here, factory default, waiting to be adopted into Unify Protect. If you don't see one of your cameras, or if you want to manually add a camera, for instance, if it's a camera that exists in a different VLAN, you can click Find More Devices down here, and then pick out your camera device or your other device, and, uh, and then you can manually add it that way. So since these have all been auto-detected, we're just gonna click add devices and adopt every single one of these cameras. You'll notice also that as soon as these cameras are adopted, it immediately goes into an updating state, right? So these are four cameras that I dug out of like my stock of extra cameras and they're, they probably have not been updated in some time. So as soon as we adopt these cameras, Unify Protect is smart enough to say, hey, let's get all these cameras automatically updated to the latest firmware based on whatever version of Protect you're running. All right, all four of my cameras have been adopted and updated, and now they are all showing up with a green status indicator on the left-hand side, meaning that they are all good. Now, if you click on any one of these cameras, like I'll click on the G4 Pro here, what you can see is some information about the camera, and then we can go into recording settings as well as general settings for the camera. We're gonna cover the settings of the camera in the next video, but for this video, if you click on the picture here, this is gonna show you a live view of that camera. And this is disorienting. Let me see if I can get this thing right side up. Okay, there we go, that's a little bit better. All right, so on this view, we see the name of the camera at the top, then we can switch the quality. So for the G4 Pro, we have the option of doing 720p, or we can pop it into 4K Ultra HD. Keeping in mind that if you're streaming 4K Ultra HD, that is a lot more bandwidth being placed on your network than 720. So you should probably reserve 4K Ultra HD for when you're actually viewing the camera on a 4K uh, monitor. I'm gonna pop mine back into 720p for now. The next icon here is sound on and off. Then we have this camera icon which allows us to take a picture of whatever is on the screen at this moment. This sort of box icon will put the entire thing into full screen. And then we have more detailed camera settings that again, we're gonna to get to in the next uh, video. These mostly have to do with the camera's uh, picture quality, the picture you know, color and hue and sharpness uh, and just the quality, the overall quality of the pic uh, picture. 
Now that we've had these cameras up and running for a few minutes, let's go back to the dashboard and see if we notice any differences. So back at our dashboard, immediately we're noticing differences, right? So we have all of these different pictures up at the top. These are going to be our events, which also includes our smart detection. So for instance, this one here looks like a car driving by. If we click on this event, sure enough, it's a car driving by. This is a motion event. So notice that was a motion event with the G3 camera. That was not a smart detection, that was just a motion event. If we click on detections, this is going to be motion and or smart detections. Down on the bottom half of the dashboard, this now shows all of our various detections. We can see there are nine motion events. And the way that this graph works at the bottom is essentially this is going backwards in time. So like right now is almost 4 p.m and we can see that I've got all of these various motion events. So this camera, the G3 Flex, is the top line here, and basically we're seeing that the G3 Flex caught these various motion events during this time. Same thing down here, the G4 Pro caught these motion events during whatever time down here. So as time goes on, you're gonna see these blue dots sort of all over the place, uh, you know, across this bottom bar, and that allows you to basically go through and see at various times when was motion detected on all of your different cameras. Another thing that you'll notice here is that we have our storage utilization is now starting to populate. So we can see how much storage has been used. The light blue bar is 1080p footage or full HD footage. And then the 4K, the dark blue bar is our 4K footage, right? So we have three 1080p cameras and one 4K camera. And so as we fill up the hard drive, you're gonna see this start to expand and cover this entire gray bar with either light blue or dark blue to indicate how much storage has been used. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. We covered the Unify Protect general settings as well as camera adoption. In the next video, we're gonna dig deeper into the individual camera settings and show you how to dial those in to get the perfect picture in Unify Protect. All right, we will see you in the next video.